Hello. Now what we're gonna do today is to call the assembly functions from C functions within the C functions. So this might be extremely useful if you're going to design something very precise and you would like to implement this um, very precise thing in the assembly language. So the first thing that we have to do is uh, open up Kyle Microvision. Um, if you haven't done so, please uh, upload, down, uh, download Microvision and get that started. That's the first thing that you have to do. Um, next, we're going to open up a new project from the project, new Microvision project part. And since it's going to be a new project, I'll have to name it something that I haven't named before. A ASM uh, func function. ASM function uh, from a C. So ASM function is enough, good enough for project representation. Uh, from here, I click on STM3F3 series. This is the device that I use for my um, implementation and from this I select the necessary device which is um, I find it from this list RET uh, and I click OK and from here the manage runtime environment I choose the core libraries next thing I choose the device file which has to have a startup of course in every implementation you need a startup file and from the startup file, um, the functions have to be listed one after another. So you have to form that startup file. Next, you have to form, um, you have to resolve this by uh, adding an STM32 CubeMX into your implementation as well. So go ahead and click on the start button on CubeMX, and that gets. Uh, the STM32 CubeMX started on the screen. You wait until the IOC is loaded. You have to wait until it's finished. The idea here is to include the HAL libraries as well into your devices along with the startup file. So uh, you just generate the code here that is necessary to include those HAL libraries into your implementation and after that you're done with this part and you close the screen click OK and at this moment you're gonna see your target is created with the device from the HAL libraries along with the startup file which is done uh, towards the end. So you click on that, you can see that it should at least include a main file within this file, which is as you see right here, along with the other routines that are necessary. This one is the initialization system in it for your uh, system to get started. Also you have an A function um, which I will name it as an A function when I put this into the assembly language form there's going to be an A function that you will be calling from the main function this is the assembly assembly uh, code that you're gonna call and this main function is your C function that you will be making that call so this has to be list listed as an import um, parameter and following that you have to load those one after another you have to call them call them actually one after another system init a func and main one after another so it has to be in this form calling those functions one after another now i'm done with this i save this stuff uh, and then i can check out the other codes i have also a main file which is find found under this tab right here that's a main.c if you double click that it's going to be opened as well and underneath here inside the while uh, statement 
let's just find that while statement in this while one statement you're gonna have you're going to have one function which is a func in my coding uh, you can also include more functions here if you like to you can make the C code run something else as well so uh, but I just have one function that is going to be an assembly language code actually so I have to write say function and let's just do that so under the source group over here you come up here and then you just say add new item to group source one source group one and it has to be an assembly file I call that my assembly uh, function and just add that to this source group so it has to be seen underneath here as, as shown here so what you're gonna write here is the function that we have been talking about which is a func has to come here so to make these things run faster I'm just gonna copy some of those portions explain them individually so I have the thumb part over here which tells me that uh, I'm going to be using thump instructions. I have my data area, which is going to have some um, some initializations for some parameters that I'll be using throughout my code. Uh, the most important one is this M, which is the memory location for uh, for for RAM. It has to be a RAM location that I'll, I'll be writing my results and this is how many times I will iterate I will iterate in the code so that's the initialization part I have the code part underneath here which is going to be as follows so I have uh, also a declaration of that function as shown here it's going to be an A function and the initializations are as follows I get the first value from up above as you see here from this 100020 memory location so I load that as the base address for storing the data output data I'm going to have indexes that will be added to R2 so it's just like an array access uh, then I push LR the reason for that is I'll be calling some sub, some some routines which I don't want to lose the LR value that I have been um, I have um, come to this routine so um, I want to go to get back to the original main function that's why I need uh, the uh, location that I would need to come back to so I have to push LR at this moment and when I exit I need to pop this LR and get back to my original position so this is quite critical over here following that I have my main function uh, in the coding down below here so what it does is it also pushes some registers so that I can recover them when I go to uh, another call function called factorial so what I want to do is I want to do some factorial operations in that factorial function that might potentially potentially change the values in R0 through R2 so that's why I want to actually save them before going there next when I come back I want to store the result into R5 by adding the value of R1 into my base so it's just like going to be something like R2 plus R1 a location is going to be used in this case as a pointer so that I can uh, put that into the right location while I'm storing that value make sure that uh, the slots are four bytes long that's why I need four bytes long uh, in each of those um, spacings so uh, I lift left shift those values towards left as you see here so left shifting twice means multiplying by four that means that I, I give four bytes of spaces okay so um, then I increment the value of R0 for the next iteration 
and I compare it with respect to the final value, which happens to be 10, but you can always change that value at the top. That's just like a constant declaration at the top. Okay, now we're fine. So we loop here in this main subroutine until we have um, a 10 in R0. And once it's 0, when, it's one, uh, when we have uh, a 10 in R0, uh, we pop back the LR value to get back to our original program and we do a BX LR for that purpose. I recover and I get back to the original program. The next thing I want to do is of course I have to write the factorial function and I'm just going to also add that to the end of the code over here. It goes like this. Um, here in this factorial function I initialize R5, a value called R5 equal to 1. So I, I, I'm going to keep on multiplying with R0 value and decrement R0 along the way, as you see here, see it here, and then uh, compare it with respect to 0, until you, uh, you hit a 0, you're going to keep on decrementing and multiplying with R5. So what is it? Basically an factorial operation, implementation. So when you're finished with this, you exit this with N0 and get back to the calling program, which is up here, in the main code, right there. Actually, it's the statement following uh, the BL statement, so you get back to that statement when you're finished. Uh, okay, so that's the whole program that uh, we have looked into. Uh, unless we made any mistakes, that should compile fine. So let's just try to build this. And save is automatically done when I clicked build. But it's a good idea to save it when you're finished with it. So hopefully it will go through without any errors. You might get some warnings here. Those are related with the Hull libraries, as usual. So we have a lot of warnings. Uh, thankfully, we don't have any um, errors as a result. So we're actually finished. Now I'm done with the coding. Now what I want to look at is how I can debug this code. So what I can do, I can assign some breakpoints along the way and to, con to control and watch where uh, the parameters change in my, uh, in, in, in my uh, either the memory or it might be the registers as well. So I click on this button at the top as you see as the start stop debug session. So I click on that. As you see I get an error. Also that's what we had discussed earlier in a different presentation that we have to make some changes in the debugger. So I make sure that in the options part over here, you have to click this part. In the options, you go to the debug and you make sure that you use the right debugger for your device. And also it's a good idea to go to the settings and change the connection to be under reset rather than normal. So that uh, saves me a lot of headache uh, in the uh, compilation phase. So I just click OK and uh, hopefully this will run fine for the debugger this time. Seems to be OK. I have my registers as you see on the left hand side. And as you see, uh, it came to the point where I have the, um, where I had a breakpoint. So I can just visualize the contents of all these registers, the contents of the values uh, and the memory also. Memory can be reached from down below here. So that's the memory button. You click on that and you can visualize any memory content. What I want to visualize is this part at M. So I copy that part. I put this over, to, over here into the address part. And I press enter, I can actually see the contents as they change in real time. So initially I have these values in these slots. So if I click step by step operation over here at the top, step over, it will move from one line to another. And as you see, 
the register contents will change and as you make changes in the code uh, the also memory contents will change eventually so as you see and we're moving step by step and I can see uh, the contents of the memory uh, being changed. For some reason uh, the, there are some old values probably I have already run once and the memory contents have been replaced with the results of the factorial operation. So I have already the results of the factorial operation. So let's check out if, there, if they look fine with me. So that looks okay. Uh, 0, 1 is for 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 6 you have, you have uh, 18 18 seems right because you're going to multiply uh, 6 by 4, that's 18 hex, and it goes on like that. So, we have uh, completed our verification phase as well. You have to look, go through this code step by step, and you have to check your, that your results are also okay. It's a good idea to come to the end of this code over here, uh, which is BXLR, that's the last point you can have in your... Um, assembly code so you can move to that line so you can run up to that point run to the cursor line and that's the last point this should be the result per each memory operation so I have these this 6 this 18 following that I have four spaces that's going to be 78 looks like correct to me uh, I can I have 0 to d0 so that these are just 16 bits the result and it goes on like that so please do the same follow the same routine um, you might be able to reach some of this code in my github account as well as well as as well as our teachings uh, in the classroom okay so thanks for listening bye bye